Hey everyone, welcome in. I'm Jess. It is a Monday evening. And it's 2024. 2024. Happy New Year. Oh my word. I am joined here by my wonderful husband, David. It is time for another D&J Plays. Today we're playing two games. We're going to start off with something light. Competitive. Aqua. <laughs> Not to be confused with the band from the 90s and early 2000s. We uh, can be Barbie girls, though, right? We can. We can, because we live in a Barbie world. Uh, totally fitting. So we're going to start off with some Aqua, and then we're going to get a newly gifted game Christmas us. Prezi. Yeah. So uh, we're going to get a little uh, mist over Carcassonne. Uh, playing there. Oh my gosh, we have a panda, panda subscribe, tier one for 14 months. That's almost oh. two babies. That's almost two babies. Uh, that's how we measure people's That's how we measure it. Yep. Love you. Miss you, Bo. Can't wait to see you soon. Yes. So we're going to yeah. see you in just a few days, panda. That is excellent. Uh, we are going to be at OrcaCon, friends. So if you want to uh, throw some dollars and cents your way to your fellow ccg -er, um please do so at the uh ko-fi there and we are we have been fortunate enough to be uh gifted some badges so because we are going to be showing off some games and hosting gaming tables all through the weekend it's going to be really cool because we are going to be highlighting some diverse uh um designers and also people that are in the pacific northwest yeah so it's gonna be really really great to um highlight them who and do we got we got we've got emma larkins we've got anna maria jackson phelps we've got um amy bayo, amy bayo. we'll probably pull out a randy flynn or two yeah you know probably get some cascadia under our belt we'll have a tate game even though tate's not northwest He's West Coast, Best Coast. Yes, we will be showing off some Aqua. Yeah. Um, we've got Fratessa Elise. Probably going to play some Wicked and Wise and maybe some new stuff that she's got. But yeah, so it's going to be all weekend. Um, it is a, an open event, so you don't have to get tickets or anything. So there's no table limit. It's just kind of come whenever. Our tables are open. Yes. Con, you need a badge. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but yes. Yeah, if you're for, gonna be at OrcaCon, come play games with us. Please do, please, please do. And Tangi, Happy New Year! Happy New Hi, Year to everyone. Yes. So, um, I turned in early last night. I celebrated East Coast New Year, so I with celebrated Tangi. with Tangi. <laughs> uh, I just watched the ball drop on YouTube and was like, okay, it's fine. So, um. Yeah. Yeah. We're not midnighters. We are not. We used to be. We used to be, but we are not anymore. Um, and so, yeah, we turned it in fairly early and uh, celebrated 2024 um, before going to sleep. So I did get some text messages at like midnight and afterwards uh, with the uh, Happy New Year and things like that. But I was asleep. So, oh, Panda's mid jet, ugh, jet lag made her a midnighter. So that's right. Yeah, she had a travel. She was traveling, friends. She was on a cruise ship all around parts of Asia and wasn't streaming for like the whole month of December. Um, and that was felt. I have to say that was definitely felt because panda a shape hole. There was a panda shape hole in my heart for the month of December because a her and I usually stream at least once you know, every two weeks or every three weeks or something like that. So there was no Panda and Jess, no PJ stream. Two, I was so looking forward to watching her stream, you know, the Fanda show or even her afternoon shows just while I'm working. Um, so it was, it was felt Panda, but I'm glad you're home safe. Um, hopefully you're getting rest and that you're well enough to be traveling to Seattle in a few days. Um. Yeah. So that's gonna be so fun. Panda it's be is so fun. a special guest. Yes, at she's a special panda. We already knew that going into it, but she's actually on paper. She is a special pa panda. So yeah. And good evening to Games Mama or whatever time zone you are in. Welcome in. Thank Hi, you Games so Mama. much 
for joining us yeah. this, this evening. Um, yeah, so we are we are super excited to, uh, to be playing some stuff on that on there, and uh, you could probably check out the events page. Uh, we called it the Designer Spotlight with Community Connection Gaming, and we are showing off our new swag. Oh yeah, that make we sure got. I, I got to make sure I'm angling the right way. Yeah, you've got you've got the nice zip up hoodie uh, with the get CCG. In camp. Get in camp. Yeah, there. I love it. And, I've uh, always wanted one of these zip-up hoodies with like the white zips, and so to have it with the CCG. And and it's on the back, yo. Kapow! Front and back. Yes. New merch. So yeah, new merch. We have yet to put it up on the website. We had to like special order them. We we had to make but, sure they actually looked okay. So yeah, so we we're only, getting pigged on ourselves. We getting pigged on ourselves. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so I'm really excited. This one's just a plain pullover hoodie because I can never get enough of pullover hoodies. They're but just you so still, comfy. It's got the big logo on the back as well. So mm -hmm. repping front and back. So if you do know see us that she is CCG. at OrcaCon, we will be wearing wearing our merch on our person. So David, what are you looking forward to at OrcaCon? Because I mean, the last convention we went to was Pax U, and we didn't really get to spend a whole lot of time together. But this one, I feel like we're going to be, be like... It's the opposite. We will be... Together for all the things. The whole thing. You're going to get so sick of me. I mean, I have Panda. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, last year, we did this same thing. And it was the first time that we did it. We had been to OrcaCon before. But last year was the first time that we uh, arranged to have tables designated yep. for CCG. Where we would be spotlighting all these folks. And so I got to meet a ton of designers for the first time, which mm -hmm. was really cool, and play their games. But then it became a little, like, hangout yeah. where all our friends, like, knew, like, okay, this is our spot. Like, let's come in. And we kind of had staked out a space. And so folks would come in and game with us, mm -hmm. folks who were coming to check stuff out. But friends were always around. And so that was really fun. It was just, you know, multiple days of just having, like, Camp CCG. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting to do that again. So I hope it goes as well as last yeah. year did. Yeah, I'm hoping and, it will too. And there will be... Oh, and also I'm looking forward to the uh, the native fry bread. Part. Oh, yeah, the, the fry bread tacos. Oh, baby. Yeah. They make these fry bread tacos so good. Some of the best food I have ever eaten. Uh-huh. Some of the best food. Oh, we got a James Brazil. Hi, James. Welcome in. Tangi says, it's a cute hoodie. Black is her favorite color. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there you go, Tangi. Uh, Panda's been sleeping for like 12 hours, catching up, trying to ho hopefully uh, the uh, alignment of the... Um, Time zones are getting a little bit better now. Slowly coming together. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Please bring me to the tacos. Yeah. Oh, friend. Yeah. No worry. No worries, Panda. That will happen. Um, so, so yeah. So it's your first Orca Con. So is it a playing con and not a buying con? Yes. It is definitely more on the playing side. There is a small like merch area. It's kind of in another room of the hotel. Um, it's not in the grand ballroom where all the tables and things are. Yeah. So it's it, pretty small. It's a pretty small vendor hall. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it, this is about playing games. They yes. have a pretty good section of play to win. Yeah. Uh, if that's something that you're into, there's some pretty cool titles there. Yep. Um. But yeah, it's just a real big room with a bunch of tables and people hanging out and playing games. Yeah. And what's really neat is that it's multiple floors. So they have like the play to win area is on its own floor. And if they have it set up um, like they did last year, you can go upstairs and they have it all laid out with like multiple tables. So it wasn't like squished in with the general gaming area. They had their own section and people were organizing it and staffing it. And it was very, very like open and friendly and people were able to like get get the games that they wanted to play and play test and all that kind of stuff. And then down in the main ballroom hall, there's going to be reserve tables. So like the CCG crew is going to be there. I know Playtest Northwest has a few tables that they're going to be showing off some of their demos. Oh, yeah. They always do a really good section of yeah. doing some. So it's mostly gaming, um, which is really nice because there's no real like pressure to go, oh, my gosh, I need to like hold on to my dollars and cents and like make sure I buy this thing right now. Yeah, what's um, nice about the vendor hall, I feel like a lot of it is 
artisans. Yeah. More so than like publishers and stuff like that. So there's there's a lot of cool craft that mm-hmm. people have made. Anything from like, you know, fun geeky tees to leather works to yeah. art, you know, like it's just yeah. It's it's more that kind of feel to the vendor hall. Um, so you get to like, if you want a little memento of the the con, you know, you can help out an artist and mm-hmm. um, get something cool. Yeah, it's there are a few game sellers, but it it really is more about artisans there. So yeah, and it's a, it's a fun and vendor Walker hall. Con does have their own merch. I know that they have dice that they're selling and tees and t shirts and things like that. So um, and it is Orca yeah. Con, so of course there is a whale. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you, yeah, you you've probably nice seen me sport my Orcacon shirt. Um, I have a few now. So yeah, and welcome in Firewind. Happy New Year to you. Hi Firewind. Uh, James, of course, started playing cribbage. Starting off 2024, playing cribbage as per usual. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for the subscription, James. I appreciate it. Nice. And one year, Tangie said she's going to come to Orcacon. Yes, one year, Tangie, you are going to come to Orcacon. Whether you Wait, like it or not. This is one year. <laughs> you Can like you come? Four you, days you have like four to days arrange. to get a flight from New York to Washington. If you leave now. <laughs> oh, man. And thank you so much, James. Subscribed with his Prime membership. So, yes, friends, if you are Thanks, an Amazon James. Prime member... You are gifted one free subscription to the channel of your choice each month. And James has chosen to uh, use it on our channel. So thank you so much for that. Ten months. I I appreciate that so, so much. That's one um, baby in a little bit. Yeah. One Clearly baby. Babies in- is the measuring <laughs> stick here. Uh, yeah. So, yes. So it is... Um, very, very exciting. We're super excited to have that happen. And um, yeah, they're they're really great. The people that organize OrcaCon are just super, super fantastic. They're very much about diversity and want to make sure people feel safe and comfortable. And they're really open to like feedback and want to make sure that people have enough uh, space so they can um enjoy their experience. I know that there are like quiet areas and things. So if people get overstimulated or they have different um, social interactions uh, that they need help with, there's also um, buttons and stickers that people can put on their badges to get how they want to engage with folks. So it's very, very um Yeah, they felt welcoming. ahead of the curve. Uh, my amount of being going to conventions is much limited, more limited to yours. But going to OrcaCon the first time years ago, Mm -hmm. they felt ahead of the curve on finding those ways to allow people to express Mm -hmm. without necessarily having to like vocally say something like, here's where I'm at. Yeah. Here's where I want our interactions to be, whether that's please don't interact with me um, to if I know you were okay to, yeah, fine. Like, Like they really did a good job of being able to whether that was on your lanyard or bracelets or buttons or just all kinds of opportunities Mm -hmm. for people to express, this is my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Um, This is my, my space and my needs. And uh, I really appreciated that. Like they really were thoughtful in creating a space where people could just be um, and feel safe. And yeah. So I, I liked seeing that. I like, Mm -hmm. OrcaCon's a cool con, so yeah. yes. Anybody who wants to, and Seattle's a cool city, so yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we're gonna be there in just a couple days. Uh, so next week's schedule is gonna be a little a little flexible. Um, we are gonna be traveling on Friday as well as Monday, or we're actually gonna be there on Friday, but we're traveling home on Monday, so my schedule will be a little bit light uh for the next couple weeks but we're here now and we're going to play some games so let's get down to the table david because this stream is sponsored by our good friend sunrise tornado aka tate Wu. tate Wu, who has designed many wonderful games my favorite being katsudoku which you played last friday with joe yep um fork was another great one recent release and he's got this one coming up very very soon yep aqua which i mean you want to see the most beautiful artwork in a game 
This is legit beautiful. And what's really neat is that the artwork is actually paintings that Tate painted himself. And he is painting more paintings to be part of the Kickstarter. Yep. Like, not only could you get game, like a, this fun, very kind of chessy maneuvering game, mm -hmm. but also you get some Tate artwork. Yeah. It's very, cool. very cool. James says he's yet to receive his copy of Fork. Um, I, I'll check in with Tate to see when that's fulfilling. Um, it might not be until the springtime because he's launching the Kickstarter uh, next week. But friends, if you want to get information about <clears throat> Aqua, there's the pre-launch page right there. Click on it and get notified. Day one is going to have a special pricing on yes. it. So make sure you put in Click your on that notification. information and get notified there. Also, for this stream, friends, we are giving away not one copy, but two copies of Playing Cats Playing Cards. That's right, friends. The uh, standard 52-card deck that you will see for all kinds of games, like Cribbage. Ooh, where are ours? What would you like to have? They are upstairs. Let me grab them. We can see. In our guest room. Okay. Or no, in our in our box of small games. Um. They are playing cats, playing cards. So the imagery are the beautiful cats that you have seen at Cat Sudoku. So we are giving away two copies of that, friends. If you want to enter into the giveaway, just send me a whisper on Twitch with the keyword cats. And I'm giving away two at the end of the stream. You don't have to be present to win. I will just message you. Um, and so far, I only have one entry. So your chances of getting a copy are very, very high. Uh, so yes, so, and you have the option because Cat Sudoku, for those that weren't familiar with Cat Sudoku, you are playing through the four seasons. And with the four seasons, you have different cats doing cutesy things. And so we have, so here is our standard deck is the playing cats playing cards here. There's still the, you know, 52 cards. This is the base set, if you want just the base set, which has the variety of all four in there. This one is the fall deck, which has most of the fall cats included in them. So we've got fall, we've got original. Whoa, this has the backs. I'm sorry, I misspoke. So this is the backs of the cards are the fall pattern. The okay, backs so of the, the cards... The faces with the original, of the cards are the same artwork. Are the same artwork with all the kitty cats there. But how do you want the feel on the table when it's Yeah, down? so then we've got springtime here. This is the spring cats edition. This one is the winter cats edition. Cats love winter. And then we've got the summertime cats edition. So we're going to away two of those copies. And here, I'll just put them here. Da, 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 da. So you can see they're all still in shrink because... I have yet to open them because I have so many cards already. I just they just look so pretty in the box still. Um, so yeah, friends, there there it is. Send me a whisper. Let me know your um, that you want to be entered into the giveaway. And yeah, I'll make sure to uh, that you get notified when you win. So good luck, everybody. Yeah. These cards are so cute. And they're good as like gifts too. So maybe if you're like, you know, I don't really play many, you know, basic card games. I'm not a, I don't play cribbage. I don't do, you know, any other kind of like rummy or poker or anything like that. These are the you, best poker cards. You can play them with adorable cats. Or if you know somebody, family members, you know, New Year's gifts are always a good thing. Uh, feel free to uh, enter into the giveaway. So what are people be... whispering? Cats? Is that... Cats. Whisper. Cats. Yeah, like cats. But actually type it out. Yes. We don't want to get confused on that. Um, can you hand me a dry erase pen? Sure. In our cup of pens there. I want to make sure we get everybody's names down here. All right. So, David, why don't you show everybody how this game is played? All right, Aqua is an 18 card game. That is it. It is a fun chess puzzle against each other. It's two players only. 
Uh, you will be playing either as the column player. So I've got the columns card here with the C. Jess is going to be the rows player. And basically what that means is the scoring opportunities are going to be for me only in columns. So I'm trying to focus on getting the columns dialed in for the scoring. Mm -hmm. And Jess is trying to get the rows. Uh, part of what I'm doing is to mess up her rows. Yes. Uh, but if I can mess up her rows in ways that also help me with my columns, great. Uh, in the cards, there are a few different suits. And so we have the lily pads. We have the waves. Um, there are sailboats. And so... And turtles. And turtles. Um, and then also on each of the cards is a number. And so the back of the card... Uh, here shows the layout of the number. So the waves have one through six, the lily pads have two through seven, boats are three, five, and seven, and then the turtles are four, six, and eight. And so as these cards getting played out, you can kind of see what may still be out there, uh, maybe what your opponent might have somewhere. And hold on a sec, love. This also indicates how many of the cards there are. So there's 18 cards, so there's only 18 squares here. Yes. So, so this, is, this is the exact count and layout of the cards. Yeah. Uh, suit and number. So that is important for some folks that like to play with, okay, what has already been played and right. strategy-wise. Yeah. So the way that it's all going to start is there's going to be a face down card dealt out to the table. And then there's going to be a face up card, right? There's going to be face up first. Oh, face up first. Thank you. Jess has played this a little bit more than me. So thank you for that. So there's a face up first. And the number on the card dictates who's going to be the first player. Yes. And so an odd number. Means that there's a face down card that's going to go below that card. Because the row player goes first. And then the row player goes first. OK. Yes. So the reason this is going below this card is because as Jess is the rose player, the odd number indicates she goes first. So I get a little bit of a, a bonus. I get yep. a card uh, started in a column for me. Yep. If it was the opposite, let's say this was a six instead of a seven, that means as the column player, I would go first. And this card would go to, to the, the right. right of the face-up card that was laid out. So Jess gets a little start for one of her rows. But this is how we're going to start. And then we each get three cards. That's our hand. And then the rest of the cards are going to be a draw deck that we're going to draw as we play a card. Yep. So what are you trying to do? You're basically trying to get sets and a little bit of uh, patterns together in specific ways. So. In order to score, you want to try to get wave cards for me in columns or the lily pads or the boats or the numbers in multiples. So I want to have as many wave cards in a column as I can because if I get a pair of them and they don't have to be uh, adjacent to each other, just in the same column, mm -hmm. a pair of them is worth two points. If I can get three wave cards or lily pads or boats, in a column that's three points four of a kind is five points if i get five of them uh which you can flip back over and see that's only possible with the waves and the uh lily, lily pads. pads if i can manage to do that i can get eight points which is quite a bit in this game uh so same thing so any of those suits or numbers so if i can get two sevens in a column that'll be worth two points for me or three twos in a column that'll be worth three points to me mm -hmm. um so I'm trying to get uh, alike things in rows. Jess is trying to get alike things in, or I'm trying to get in columns, sorry. I'm trying to get alike things in columns. Jess is trying to get alike things in rows. And you will see too on your reference, it's like here's the rows visual while well, David says a C for columns. Right. So that also can help you as well. It reminds you which ones you score. But there is a caveat for scoring. What's the caveat on scoring? So the numbers are very critical because the only way you can score a column or a just can score a row is if the sum total of the numbers in that column or row is between 10 and 20. If she gets the numbers uh, on the cards, not the number of cards. Right, not the number of cards, but the sum of the numbers on the cards. If Jess has a row with nine, that's not valid. It doesn't score. If I have a column with 22, sorry, that's worth nothing. Yeah, Trixie is right, Panda. Yes. Trixie and so this is, right. is where you can kind of stick it to each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like you you may be watching uh, what they're doing and they may be focused on a particular row. So you're like, aha, I'm laying down a real big number in that row. Mm -hmm. Good luck trying to score it. We'll see how you do. Um, 
And you may try to stick a card off on the side with the hopes that you're going to be able to add another one later on to get that actually up to a two or a three column or three card column to score it and uh -huh. maybe you run out of time. So it's all about placement in here. Placement will have to be done uh, orthogonally adjacent to a card that's already been played. So somewhere around these. Uh, you can start new columns or new rows in those ways. Um, and when you place a card, and I'll talk about a little bit more of the scoring in one second. When you place a card, you have to place it the opposite of the card that you're placing adjacent to. So if I was to place next to this face up card, I would place my card face down. If I'm placing next to this face down card, I would place my card face up. And a card like this that starts face down, once it gets surrounded orthogonally, so north, south, east, west, all those positions filled, we will flip that card over to show what it is. So there's some level of hidden information that may get revealed before the end of the game, may not get revealed until the end of the game. Uh -huh. And so you may not know exactly what somebody's doing. It's also a little tricky because as you play this, you're like, oh shoot. What did I play? What did I play there? And so you have to like, you have to really remember and think like, what were you trying to do? Because you're placing some of your moves face down. Uh -huh. All right, so a kinds uh, in rows and columns for the particular players. Sea turtles in uh, water. Uh, turtles want to be in water, right? So if you can get a turtle card directly adjacent. So remember with the other kinds, they don't have to be directly adjacent. They just have to be in the same column or the same row. Sea turtles want to be directly adjacent to water. If you can waves. get waves. If you want to get the tur if you can get the turtle next to one set of waves, one card of waves, you get two points. If you can get a turtle with waves on both sides, then you get five points for that turtle. So that's another way that you can score. But again, remember this is in the yellow section. So that column or row with the turtles and waves has to be a total, some total of 10 to 20. Otherwise, sorry turtle, you don't get to score for us. All right, and lastly, the other way that you can score is by consecutive, for me, columns that have a lily pad in them and for just consecutive rows that have a lily pad. It just has to be one. There could be two or three that doesn't help you or hurt you, but it does mean that that row counts as having uh, lily pads in it. So already I've got one column. This okay. column has a lily pad in it and just has one row that has a lily pad in it. So she may be trying to get some lily pads here and down here because she wants multiple rows. Uh -huh. They have to be consecutive. So you can't have a lily pad here, here, and then nothing, and then one down here and go, oh, that's three. Nope, sorry, that's only two in a row. And you'll score uh, increasing points depending on how many of those rows or columns with lily pads in them that you can get. Two for two, three for three, four for five. So if you can really start cranking on that, that's a good way to score. And five for eight. So this is it. This is uh, of a kinds, turtles next to waters, and then your lily pads. One last thing to talk about are the visitors. These little white cubes in the current uh, prototype. I don't know if they're going to be any different. They might just be these white cubes as yeah, visitors. But I don't know. When a boat card gets played face up by a player, they will put two visitors onto that card. Because remember, we are in a museum. We are curators mm -hmm. trying to arrange the best art exhibit that we can, and we want visitors to come. So they will place that. So let's say this is a boat card. It's played face up by me. I put two visitors on it. I then get to choose to move one of these visitors anywhere up to three spaces adjacent to that card, zero to three. I could leave it there if I wanted. And that will score one extra point for me in any of the scoring opportunities um, if, that col yeah, if that column or row falls within the sum uh, of that category. So if that is a turtle and I happen to have two cards on each side with waves and this column scores, then I would get six instead of five. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna wanna get your visitors placed onto paintings that you really believe are gonna score for you. Mm -hmm. And so I would move one of them up to three and then Jess would move the other one up to three. And that can be put onto a face down card if you want to. Um, and then it'll just be something that gets revealed later on at the end of the game. So one last thing, um, when a face down card is surrounded on all four sides by face up cards, then that card itself will get flipped over and revealed. Uh, we will play all the cards 
When we take a turn, we will place a card somewhere in the grid and then draw a card from the deck. So we would always have three in our hand. When the deck gets depleted, we will continue to take turns um, until all of our cards have been played. So we will play out all 18 cards in the grid. If there are any face down cards at the end of the game, they will all be flipped face up before final scoring. Okie doke. So, all right, so that is me. I am, oh, you are first player, yes. Uh, I am the row. Is Rose. Ross. Ah, uh, Ross. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, I'm going to do... And if you're going to be at OrcaCon and you want to play this in person... We will have... We will be playing it in person. And remember, if you are joining us recently, we were going to be giving away copies of Tate's wonderful cat playing cards. Just whisper Jess with the word cat. Playing cat. Playing cats, playing cards. Okay, what did you play there? Did you draw? Yes. Right. It is a worldwide giveaway, friends, so... Let's do... Mm. That. Okay. A little fun fact, uh, David helped name some of these cards. Yeah, so this would be the first cool. game ever that has my name and credits in the credits. So I'm gonna do that here. Yeah, Tate is a good friend, so he allowed that opportunity. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is our? Sorry, our, our camera is kind of tilted. Apologies, friends. I don't know why it's tilted that way. Did you draw? Nope. Thank you. Um. Okay. There we go. Hmm. 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 You not only are you trying to remember what the suit was that you played, but you're trying to remember the numbers too, because that sum is tricky. You you don't want to bust. And you do want your opponent to bust. Yeah. I have yet to win a game. <laughs> play this against you. I play this against Book of Nerds. I play this against Phantom. And I have yet to win. Well, Not today, saying this is going to happen. Not saying it's going to happen. I mean, today I did get a watermelon, though. <laughs> you did get, watermelon you're game. You're very excited by that watermelon. Watermelon game, y'all. In you, the suikas. Watermelon game, y'all. Who out there is playing suika? Uh, yeah. Let us know in the chat if you're playing this ridiculously addictive, addictive game. Cute, frustrating. Yeah. Y'all in the chat told me about it. I I bought it. I've Oh, Panda, what game you say? You've got poor pineapples, Tangri? <gasps> no. Oh my goodness. All right, hold on. I have to put this in the chat. Oh, last card drawn. I have to put this in the chat. There is a there is a web version, but it's not the same. It is definitely not the same. Yeah, it, it's not, it's it's fine, it's not great. The actual version that Jess is posting yeah. here is So Panda, friends in the chat told me about this game that's like my new favorite addiction. And so I downloaded it and I've been playing it so much that I actually streamed it one day. And uh, whoa, whoa, what's happening? Oops, too far. What's happening here? 
I'm messing with the camera. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Panda just gave us Panda just gave us an em an emo a uh, stream update, and now you're messing with it. <laughs> you don't have a switch. It's okay, Panda. I think I think there might be a Steam version. There might be something on Steam. There is a tabletop version, or you can stream uh, on a, on a website. You can do this one, which is not as great. Yes, yeah, so you can play it on just your web browser. It doesn't have as great art and gameplay, but maybe it'll scratch the itch. Oh, it's fantastic, though. Or maybe it'll light the itch and convince you that you're going to get a switch. <laughs> you're going to get a switch itch. A switch itch. Got to itch that switch. Oh, gosh. Um. Okay, my turn? Yes. Okay. The draw deck. You got talking is, about watermelons, and you forgot all about this game we're playing. The draw deck is depleted. So now we're just, so now play we're just playing out. out our cards. All right. Um, but yeah, I told Book of Nerds about it, and then he posted about it on his Discord, and then several people in the Discord were playing it, and then Elle Fire Spray learned about it, so she bought it for her kids, and now her kids are obsessed with it. We started a trend. The funny thing is is this game has been out for a few years now in Japan, and they just released it worldwide in October. So that's why there's this big old hype around it in the last few months. Um, but it has been around for a bit. Okay. <laughs> Distract Jess now she doesn't remember cards. Boo, Panda. Boo, I say. I love this game, too. So notice that... Oh, our first visitors. Notice that what? Uh, we're we're arranging this fairly rectangularly, but we've played games where it like it's a dinosaur or it's a road. You know, like the, just the way the cards get laid out. It's not you don't have to keep it within some kind of like two by five or three by three or whatever. Like it just go where it's gonna go. It's a museum. It, it's gonna get artsy. I'm gonna move it down here. Okay, I'm gonna move it here. Your turns. I don't feel good about this column. <laughs> no, you don't? I don't know why, but uh. All right, um, we'll do this. Okay, I'm gonna do mine up here. If you mess up another column for me, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bum -bum. All right, we'll go right here. All right, now flippity gibbets. Okay, all the cards have been played, so now we flip face up everything that was face down, and we see what we're gonna get. Oh, turtle. Found the turtle column. <laughs> this column. Way bust. All right, you got score. Yeah, can you hand me? Can you hand me? Yeah, yes, we can write on that. And I need a regular pen, not a dry erase, please. Okay, who's going to score first? You can score first for the columns. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down this scorecard, and we're going to look for the uh, other kinds and the turtles, okay. and make sure that they're in the 10 to 20 range. Okay. So I've got 12, 14. So this scores. Mm -hmm. We've got a pair of lily pads. So that's two points, mm -hmm. and that looks like it there. 10, 14, 17, 20. Wow, so nice. So this one scores. We've got two pairs of numbers, two fours and two threes. So that's four. Uh huh. We've got one, two, three waters. So that's three. three. And I think that's it there. Okay, then we got 13, 20, no, no, way too many. <laughs> uh, six, 12, 15, 16. So this one scores. So we've got. 
uh, all unique numbers. We got two uh, turtles. Turtles don't count for pairings. We have two waters, okay. so that'll count for a pair. And then we will do the turtle scores. So the only one that I'm going to score is in this. So this turtle is next to a water, so that gets two points. Mm -hmm. And this turtle is next to a water, that gets two points. However, the visitor is on this card, so that will be two extra points because that will score one mm -hmm. extra for each of those turtles. And now okay. your lily pads. So columns with lily pads. This has one, this has one, this has one, this has one. So I got four columns for five more points. Okay. Hey, that's not bad. Two, six, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 22. 22, all right. I feel pretty good about that. All right, here goes me. All right, you want me to run through it? Yes. Okay, so we have 11, 15, this scores, uh, but there is nothing that I see. Okay. All right, this one is six, 14, 16, so this scores. You got a pair of twos for two, a pair of lily pads for two more. Uh-huh. Okay. Here we have 9, 16, 22, that's a bust. 10, 15, 18, this scores. You have two threes for a pair uh -huh. and two waves for a pair. Uh -huh. And then down here you have 9, 10, so this scores, but nothing. there's nothing there. All right, so going into your turtles, this turtle is not next to water. This turtle is next to water, and this road did score, so that is two points, plus there's a visitor there, so you get an extra point. Mm -hmm. And then this turtle is not next to water, so that one doesn't score. And then I get an extra point for that one. What did this score? The waves. Oh, I'm sorry, I totally missed that. Yep, so add an extra point for that pair of waves, because there's a visitor there seeing them. And then col columns with lily pads. So one, two, three, four, or rows. Sorry, I said columns. Four rows with lily pads is five points for you as well. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten, fifteen, seventeen. Oh, squeaked it out. Dang it. My sweet turtles. Dang it. 17 that was close, to 22. Though. 17 to 22. GG's. And that is Aqua. And it plays pretty quick. And so, you know, if you get a little hose because the cards didn't fall your way, shuffle it up and deal it again. GG's, everybody. And this artwork, folks, I mean, look at these paintings that Tate painted. Aren't they so good? Oh, I love good it. Grief. The turtles are great. Sailboats are great. So. Oh, good grief. So check it out, go to the Kickstarter, sign up for notifications. It's going to be launching very, very soon. Thank you very much to Sunrise Tornado for sponsoring this and doing our giveaway. Are we going to... Do you wanna do our giveaway? I was gonna wait till the end, but we can do it oh, now. Oh, sneaky. We can wait till now. Okay, well, whatever you wanna do. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Okay. I don't wanna wait. So we've got... If people want to enter in the giveaway, I'll give everybody a last like minute to join in the giveaway. We are giving away two, two copies, copies of playing cats, choice? playing cats Playing Cards. Yes. Yes. So Playing Cats Playing Cards, these are just base your standard deck playing cards. However, they have the beautiful artwork from Cat Sudoku. So you have the option of the original playing cards, which has just the yellow with the paw print on the back and all of the different cats on the flip side. We've got, this one is autumn, we've got spring, we've got summer, and we've got winter. Oh, are you opening one up? Yeah. Okay. I wanna see the cards. So Whisper Jess Cats. Whisper me in the Twitch whispers. You wanna be entered into the giveaway. And, uh. I think we said this earlier, but just to make sure that everybody remembers, uh, there is a first day deal on this Kickstarter. So for Aqua. For Aqua, if you purchase on that first day, it's only seven dollars. Yeah. Which is so good. This game, there's a good amount of game in these eighteen cards. Like, it's pretty cool. And then when you get this playing card, you can you can play any kind of regular. Any kind of regular uh, card game that you want. So Dave is going to show you what they look like. 
So here's the backs of the fall cards. You can see these lovely fall colors. Yeah. And then here's this super pretty artwork. So you have the, so like a cherry blossom kind of flower. That's one of the suits. S suit. You have more of like a, a daisy or a sunflower kind of suit. Yep. All and all the cats, fish. all the cats have names on them. I don't know exactly what all the names are. But... Aki, Boo Boo, Charlemagne. Oh, yeah. They're down at the bottom. Dipper. This is so cute. Got to show them up closer to the kind of a. Oh yeah, there you go. Down here at the bottom, you can see all the names. There's Aki. There's Boo Boo. Yeah. So that is great. So you will see all of those. All the cats' faces are the same. The only difference is on the rest of the cards is just the card back. So, yeah, so we which opened back up. would you like? Yeah. So this is just the original, the yellow. We've got spring, winter, summer, and then we just opened up fall. Is this the Joker? It's got all four suits on it to make the background. <laughs> super cute. Super cute. All right. So I think we're good. I think everybody that has entered has entered if they want to enter. Um, all right, we are closing the giveaway. We have four people. So let's grab out a D4, Dave. The bag of holding. How long will it take me to find a D4? Shouldn't be that long. I don't have that many. There we go. Okay. There, let's do that one, that's easy. All go. right, so first. So two people are getting the copy of their choice. First, oh wait, I'm gonna have you roll it so that way people don't blame me for my poor rolling. <laughs> they've, okay, they've, you got, they've watched this stream enough. They you know. You got numbers assigned to everybody? So, yes. Okay, here One, we go. One, two, three, four. First is number three. Number three, Games Mama. Games Mama gets a copy. Da, 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 da. And number. One. Panda Panda. Panda gets a copy. Da, 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 da. So let just know which back you would like. Yeah, just send me a whisper. Your contact info. Send and... me a whisper with your email address and which back you would like. And remember the backs are the uh, plain yellow or each of the seasons, fall, winter, yep. spring, summer. Yep, yep. Woohoo! GG's, everybody. GGs. And remember to go out and uh, sign up for notifications on the Kickstarter because this is a fun one, guys. Yeah. All right. Next game is a new acquisition that we just got. We love Carcassonne. Carcassonne was one of the original games that we added to our collection when we first got into the it hobby. It seriously was. It was... If not, like, in that first set we bought, yeah. probably, like, within the first 10 games that we bought. Yes, yes. So this one, friends, is a delightful co-op take on the original um, base game, but you can play it as is, and uh, I am super, super excited. We got, we got a couple games of this to the table. We lost both of them. Yeah, but it is super fun. Um, it is. It's a really fun one. How it differs is going to be based on a few criteria. So let's get down. Yeah, hell yeah, co-op. I know. We might just bring this with us to OrcaCon because we've just had so much fun with it. Um, I don't know. Should I keep this table light on? Should I... We've got some glare going on. I can maybe get this out of the way, huh? Panda. This is just the scoring. Yeah, Panda wants to play this. So, okay. So, friends, Carcassonne is a tile placement game. And you are placing tiles that have different terrain on them. And you have your own little set of meeples that you will be placing on certain features of a tile when you place it. You either have totally cities great. that you can place it. Um, I will be blue, I'll be blue and red this time. 
certain features that you can place to score points. Um, scoring points uh, will happen when you complete a feature. So like here on a road, when the road is ended, either and when it reaches a city or when it reaches like a crossroad or something like that, you will score points. These city pieces will be completed once you complete all the city walls, um, you will score points for that. There are also other features such as like monasteries and fields and all that kind of stuff, but this game is only going to focus on a few features. It'll focus on roads, it's gonna focus on cities, it's gonna focus on this mist, which is considered another area, and there are also going to be cemeteries that you will see there very clearly. And castles. And, oh yes, and castles. Castles Cemetery. are like monasteries if you've played. If you've played the, uh, was it Inns and Cathedrals? Uh, no, like regular, regular Carcassonne. Oh, yeah. The monasteries that are in there. Yeah. Castles are very similar. To so that. how this game is going to work is similar mechanics to Carcassonne. Draw a tile, place it somewhere in the grid. Um, adjacent to a currently placed tile, and then you have the option of whether or not you want to place one of your meeples there. We each have six meeples, but since we are playing cooperatively, we have two different colors. So I'm going to be the red and blue meeples. David's going to be the yellow and green meeples. I think normally you would have five of one color if you're playing with yes. more than two players. Yes. You have five of one color, but because we're playing co uh, two player, they said take three of two different colors so that we have six meeples. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Panda, anytime you want to do a co-op, I am always game for co-ops. Um, so what's going to happen, friends, is we have this starter tile here, which is kind of like a ruined city. We've got some uh, cities. we got some mist. we got some things like that. Oops. When we, the object of the game is to try to score a certain threshold of points before we lose uh, all of our ghosts in our ghost bank, basically. Ghosts get placed out on tiles when you see their icons here somewhere on mist, okay? So for example, here we're starting with, we are going to start with three ghosts because there are three ghost icons on this tile. This tile is considered a four tile large area so it's it's equivalent to a tile equivalent to four tiles like this yeah in size so you can see the things that are it's mist and cities and there's roads and, and things one, like that yeah, roads and then one field two okay fields. so when we place tiles out we must follow the caveat in that it must line up to a currently placed feature. So like cities must line up next to cities, fields must line up next to fields, roads must line up next to roads, and mist now has to line up next to mist, okay? So when we do that, we'll place our tile and then we have the option of placing out a, um, a meeple. If we place something that has mist on it, we can have a few options when that happens. We can place it adjacent to a currently placed mist. When we do that, we will place ghosts based on the number of icons on that tile minus one. Okay. Which is good. You want to place as few ghosts as possible. Yes, because we only have a bank of 15 ghosts for the entire game. Once we deplete that bank and we and we have no more to place out on the board, then we end the game immediately and we lose, okay? Uh, so we can either place that or we could add it as a new mist area. And when we create a new mist area, we must place the ghost equal to the number of ghosts visible on that tile. So we don't get a discount at all. The only way we get a discount is if we add it to a currently placed mist area, okay? Now, when we close off a mist, like when we close off the borders of a city or when we close off roads, when this mist is completely closed off, um, we can remove ghosts up to- All the ghosts in that mist region. All the ghosts in that mist region. Yeah. Okay. The three ghost thing is oh, I'm in scoring. lieu okay. of scoring. Okay, gotcha. So when we close off a mist area, we can remove all the ghosts from that area. Okay, and that's good, it'll go back into our pool. Now, let's say we decided to do a city here, um, and we did, let's grab a city tile, 
let's say for example, we did this here and we closed off a city. We have two options. We can either A, score the city as is for its regular points, which would be two points per tile that created that city. Or B, we can remove up to three ghosts anywhere on the board. Any single tile. Right, from any single tile. Yeah. So, so this do... would be considered one single tile. This is considered one single tile yeah. over here. So we could not take all three of these because they are on different yeah. tiles. We could take those two, yeah. which is good. So that is a caveat that we talk about in the co-op version. So even if we complete features, do we want to score for those points or do we want to remove ghosts? Because it's a nice like push and pull to kind of keep our ghost bank um with some supply in it if we right. can okay. but if we never score the game will never end right well it will end because we'll run out of tiles right the game will end also uh instead of depleting all of our ghosts and needing to place more the game will also end when we deplete through all of our tiles there are 60 tiles in the game when we have no more tiles to place then the game will also end and um we lose. and we lose Right now, we are playing at the level two. There's the three levels. Would you mind grabbing that tile there, love? So there's three levels of difficulty you can play on. Six. Oh, six levels of difficulty. Okay. So it gives you... level two. It gives you how many ghosts you need to have in your bank, what the point threshold is in order for you to win, and what you're going to be using uh, your tiles... So this is include cemeteries, include castles. Yes. Don't include the hounds. Yeah. So and the hounds is a different way to um, yeah. get some removal of ghosts. We have yet to play with that. So, yeah. Because so we've, we've yet played to beat on, level two. We've played on your level two, which right now we're going to play on level two, which is we have 15 ghosts in our bank. Our threshold to win is 75 points. We are using cemeteries. We are using castles. And we are not using the hounds. Um, cemetery. So this, an example, is a cemetery. When a cemetery gets placed out, any time a mist would add ghosts, you will also add one ghost to the cemetery. If there's only one cemetery out, it will have to go in that cemetery. If there are multiple cemeteries out, then you choose which cemetery you can place then ghosts do get removed once a cemetery is surrounded on all four sides. All the ghosts that are in that cemetery get removed. However, you must sacrifice one of your meeples on the board to the gravesite. Dun, 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 dun. So basically, you revived a bunch of dead people by killing off someone. <laughs> Um, so that is how the cemetery works. And it's only four sides. It's only the four sides, north, south, east, west. Conversely, with a castle, the castles work like monasteries, and the way that you score them is the same as when you surround all eight sides, which is including the diagonals on a castle is when you score. And they score, so this doesn't score, unless we were closing up a city, we could score the city. But, sure. But the cemetery doesn't score, it just helps us get rid of a bunch of ghosts castles do score and they score two points per adjacent tile that, that has, has missed mist on it yeah so unlike a monastery where you score one point per adjacent tile uh the castles are two points per tile with mist yeah so you want to try to get a good amount of mist around the castles if you can um, if you can. But that is about it, friends. So yeah, we'll talk through anything else that we forgot. Yeah. It's it's uh it sounds simple enough, but really it is fairly tricksy. Um like we said, we played two games of it already and lost like pretty handily. We thought we were like, "Oh, we we're pretty good." We got to 52 points. Oh, uh, one cool thing, we did make this work in the second game we played. Uh, if you if you know competitive Carcassonne, if you have claim on a city because you got one of your meeples in there, and somebody else can work their way into that city by being part of a different city group that then gets connected together before either of them gets closed off, you both score points, right? Like in the mm -hmm. competitive game, if that city is worth fifteen or I guess sixteen points because they're two points each. 
you would both score 16, um, which is sometimes a wash. But in this game, you score double points for your cooperative total. So if I am in a city and Jess can also make her way into that city, if that scored 16 points, it would score us 32 points right. towards our total of 75 that we're trying to hit. So it may behoove us to try to start both being in the yeah. city and doubling the But points. it also is harder to create a bigger city because we sacrifice a lot of ghosts yeah. and meeples and We're trying to figure out that, that balance stuff. of how quickly do we want to close something off yeah. so that we can either score or instead of scoring clean off ghosts. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, love. What you got? Me first. All right, let's see. And here's some mist. So I got a road. I got a city. Um. So if I wanted a discount, I could think about doing that. But that puts a road going into that city, which seems Kinda, miserable. Yeah. And both of these roads are in mist. And this road is not, not in mist. So if I was to try to join that, we would never be able to close this mist off. I don't think we can line it up like that. You can, can you? yes. So with mist, that's the one exception oh, to the alignment okay. rule. But it means that this mist bank yeah. will never be able to close off for the game. Yeah. Um, which we may haven't not be that done bad that yet. We could try to like, we could just get rid of these through other means. Sure. But yeah. we haven't done that yet, Panda. Uh, we've done it on competitive Carcassonne. Drawing the three tiles and choosing one. Yeah, we haven't done that in this game. That might make a difference. That might make a difference. Because I do love that. That's the only way I want to play Car Carcassonne is yeah. the three tile rule. Okay, so I'm thinking I'll do this. Uh, we put one ghost out. All right, so take your turn with this one. I'll take my turn with just drawing one, and then our next turns we'll have three. Ooh, okay. Okay. And then I'm going to score this city. So I'm basically dropping my guy here, and that'll be four points. And I take him back because that is a closed city. Okay. Well, ma'am. Oh, that's a lot of city. A lot of city. Can I wonder if they mentioned that variant, the three tile rule. Yeah. I do something like that. I wonder if the three tiles, because there's some other stuff that's coming in the ways that you draw tiles. Yeah. In other they levels. are cute ghosties, Tanji. I mean. We need to draw little happy faces on them. Yeah, because you see, I'll show you the box top. The box top has the ghosty, and he's like, hey, you know. <laughs> They're like, hi, welcome to Carcassonne. <laughs> So it's pretty funny. Welcome to Carcassonne, now die. Yeah. Okay, so I did that. I'm going to put one of mine here. All right, so now I'm going to draw three. Yeah, we don't need the scoreboard up yeah, there. We'll just tell people where we're at. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. So I'm going to do this and they do tell you too that you can shuffle this in as an expansion oh yes there is a way to use this in the competitive game yeah okay so i closed off this bank so technically we would place order of ops we'd place a ghost first so if we did not have that ghost to place it would be game over but we're fine we don't have to though because it's connected to current Missed. Oh, that's true. We get a one ghost discount, so we would be okay in this yeah, one. Yeah, so you wouldn't have right. to connect that one. So we don't have to place it, though. We get rid of this ghost because this mist bank is closed. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to place my guy outside the mist bank. He, he doesn't want to be in the mist. He's going to be on this road. Okay. <laughs> These ghosts are great. They're all different. Yeah. It's so fun. All right, I'm going to do mine like this. This might be my like new favorite way to play Carcassonne. Oh, here comes some ghosts. Two of them out here. And I'm already in that city, so I can't place. Right. And, and the shields are still there if you play base Carcassonne, so that counts for an extra two doubled. points on that city. All right. Um... Uh, 
Did it say anything about the three tiles? No, not that I saw. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So our threshold is 75 points, and we currently have four. We're at four points, but how about this? Ooh, nice. So we got to place one ghost because I'm creating a new, new mist, mist bank over here. But I am going to jump into this city, and it's closed. So yep. I immediately score two, four, six points two nice. per tile that is in the city. So we're at 10 we're now. We're at 10 now. Sweet. Hey, Deadpan. Welcome in. Hey, Deadpan. Oh. What's up? Happy New Year to you. Oh. Nope. Nope. Tangie, I cannot nope. stop thinking about those freaking Ticino teas. <laughs> <laughs> He's obsessed now. I like look at those website. I'm like, I gotta get something here. So you have effectively sold some Ticino for them because you spread the love, and that was great. Hey, right, I'm gonna do this, and I'm adding to a current mist, so that doesn't give me anything. Right. There's only one ghost symbol, and we get a one ghost discount because it's. On a card mist field. Put him in a thing. Okay. How about this? What'd you do? So I'm going to claim this city. Okay. And we can choose something. So Jess, this road is going to score yep. because it is closed on both sides. Yep. It would be worth three points. So we can take three points. Or we can remove up to three ghosts on a single tile. On, yeah, up to three ghosts on one tile. So we currently have six out. What do you think? Because it's a road and that's just three points, I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe let's clear up because you know as soon as we get a cemetery, things are gonna get worse. Get worse. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's fine. So, so one we'll, of those two. Yeah. I'll do these. So instead of scoring this meeple, the three points for the road, we're just going to bring it back and we get to clear off up to three ghosts from one tile. So we removed those two. Great. Done? Done. What's up next? Okay. I'm going to do this. All right. Okay. And so that clears this tile. There's no new mist. I didn't create any new mist, so I... Close off the city. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten because of the shield. Ten points. Okay, nice. I think we should take those. So I think we should do twenty. All right, we're there. at twenty. Very nice. Okay, I'm gonna come play this one up here. Ooh. So there are two ghosts on this one, but it's connected <laughs> to an existing mist bank, so I only have to place one. And it adds a city piece onto my city. Yep. And there's a road. Should I go on the road? Nah. Probably. I saw four meeples. Oh, I said nah. <laughs> and I said yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. What do we got? Closing off some mist here. Um... Yeah, so this game is interesting. So they have a four size tile, four tile that you start off with. You start off with every game. Hmm. I don't like any of my options. Apparently, Jess wants to play with the five tile variant. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to do this. Ooh, Nelly. All right. I but like I'm going to put one of my people's there. Ooh, we're going to try to double up. I and love we it. added to a current mist bank, but that's only one, not okay. two. So we had one. We're going to try it. We're going to try right. it. Now, in normal Carcassonne, I would try to shut you out. Right. <laughs> Get but out of my city. This is co op. This, this, this is, is a co op. This is different. Because I've played enough Carcassonne with people to, like, they just don't give 
a rip and they want to like be in your city. All right. Um, Welcome now, to our city. Now it's different mentality because you want to be joining cities together. Two ghosties in that little field over there. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, that's a that's a road. Oh, wait. You got a good one. Road. Yeah. Road. My turn. Your turn. Okay. I'm gonna do that. Oh, very nice. Um, and I'm gonna do here. Oh, you can't. Oh, right. Uh, I yeah. can't because you're there. Okay, so this is done, right? Because this is a mist. Closed off that city. Uh, this yes. So this city is closed off. It I... has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14 points times two times two because we're both in it that is 28 points for us i think we should score that i think so too all right so 28 plus 20 is 48 okay very nice and what do we got what am i looking at um <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm going to do this. Okay. Because that connects on that road. So this is a single ghost symbol, and I'm connecting it onto an existing bank, so I don't have to place any ghosts. No. Do you uh, want that road? Sure. I will claim the road. Okay. I am the road warrior. Hmm. I don't want to jinx us, but I feel like this is going better than our other two. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. Now we're going to get jinxed. Okay. We may have to like refine this. If this is if this ends up being like a super easy. too easy, maybe we go with like two tiles instead of three tiles or something like that. Okay, I'm going to do this. Because it felt like three tiles was a or one tile was impossible. Woo! So it's connected, so it's only two. Two ghosts, not three. That's a good discount because we haven't had a cemetery yet. No. That might be one thing that makes this three tile variant not work. Like you could kind of just bury a cemetery in your hand. hand. But we'll see. Experiments. All right, so we got a lot of reds. Okay. Got a lot of mist. Um, and I haven't seen any castles yet either. How about this? Make your city a little bigger. Okay. And she's already got this city claimed, so I can't do anything about that. But all the artwork in this is cool too, like the. Some of the roads have like scraggly trees like you'd see in the Wizard of Oz, that apple court, apple tree scene. They're like, like how? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do this. Oh, very nice. Okay, so we would place one. one. But that is a closed, closed mist. Very nice. So bye-bye. All those go bye-bye. Okay, do you want to claim one of those cities? Uh, yeah, there's no farmers in this, so you can't put any of your meeples in fields. So it's a little bit different. Ahem. <clears throat> Um, we got roads on. I'm gonna send this road this way. Maybe we can connect it onto there. Mm, okay. So, okie doke. That's me. Hmm. Oh boy. So it's funny, I'm hearing noises upstairs. I'm like, 
Is there both a ghost Jess and I are both here. No, it's probably our puppy. I think SB is restless. She's jumping on the bed or something. Oh. And what's cool is if you do decide to join this in with like the competitive game, each of these tiles from this this one has a little ghost symbol so you know these belong to the mists of Carcassonne so you can sort it out. That's very nice. Can I do that here or is that problematic? It's not necessarily problematic. I'm just worried about this part right here. I'm sure the tile exists. Okay, so <laughs> I'm adding to an existing so don't have to do anything. Okay. And you jump in on that? Yeah. All right, let's do. I'm going to play down here. Mm. So that's two ghosts for a new mist field. You can't see it, just trust us. And I'm going to jump in on this city. Okay. See if maybe we can join these. Can we go a little wider? You can see it now. Yeah, there we go. So I just added these two ghosts down here. Mm. Oh, so question. Yeah. So this is considered legal play? Yes. It just means we will never close off that mist field. Oh. Which is not necessarily a horrible thing. Okay. You know, closing off mist fields means you get rid of all the ghosts, but we have other ways that we could get rid of them if we wanted to. Okay. So that's adding, so that's just two. Okay. There. Okay. We are still at 48 points. We need 75. So we need to start scoring things. Yeah. Can we close stuff off? I can do this. And I'll jump over here onto this city. Okay. Ooh, I've got a rule. What? So what if we do this three tile variant? Uh-huh. But we say if you draw a cemetery, you have to play it on your next turn. Okay. So you never have the ability to just bury it in your three tiles. Okay. Mm. Let's do this. Three new ghosties. Oof. We are running low on ghosts now. We only have three left. Okay. Got to clear some more. Okay. Well, I was just hoping you would not play there, but alas. Um. Hmm. All right. Have a have a good night. Thank you so much, Games Mama. I uh, will make sure to send you all the tracking info for your playing cards. Congrats. Yeah. Thanks for being here tonight. And congratulations on your win. All right. How about... How about this? Mm -mm. So this is our first cemetery. So this means anytime we have to play a ghost, we have to put one here mm -hmm. until we have all four orthogonal sides surrounded. So we kind of want to maybe hurry a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to play my meeple here on this road. This road immediately scores because it's closed on both ends. And instead of scoring it, I'm going to say, let's get rid of these three. Okay. 
because we can get rid of up to three ghosts from a tile somewhere. Uh-huh. So I drew that cemetery and I was like, oh, I could just bury this. But I was like, ah, that feels like it goes against the, the heart of the game. Uh-huh. So we've amended our three tile rule that if you draw a cemetery, you must play it immediately. Um, dang, anything around the cemetery work? No, well, I could do this. Does that, would that close off our oh. city over here? This. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So drop two ghosts for two a new... Two ghosties. New mist field. And because we had to play a ghost, we have to put one over here on the cemetery. Yep. And we should probably score. Yeah. So this city is closed, and it has two, four, six, eight... We don't double count that. It's no. per tile. So two, four, six, eight points times two because we're both in it for 16 more points. Okay. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Puts it at 64. 64. Okay. We only need 11 more points. Yep. So we have to survive. And we only have three ghosties left. We only got three ghosts left. So that's that's limiting. Um, oh my gosh. Yep. Well, this is all bad. Can you finish can you finish off your cities or anything? Yeah, I could. You can't add any more mist. That would be bad. And that is not great. Okay. Mm -hmm. I couldn't play this one. <laughs> I can only play this one. I don't have a great move. I guess. I guess my best move is to close this off, which puts these two and this, mm -hmm. which means no ghosts. Don't we either score, score it. score four points or... Don't score it. We put two, two ghosts back. Don't score it. So we'll take these two out. I don't know that that was the best move, but... It's a move! It's a move, Mario! Okay, I'm gonna do... So, you can only place one ghost of mist. Because the other one's gonna have to go here. Yeah. So we have a city we could close off there or there. If you place something gonna, here, it could connect to a mist. Doing this. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Doesn't doesn't do anything. And because we don't play a ghost, we also don't play one here uh -huh. because the rules specifically state that you only add one to the cemetery when you would add one to the board. And so the rule is that you only place you place one less than so. Symbols. I, we so. could score six points or remove two ghosts. I'm saying let's remove. More ghosts. 
Ooh, that's tough, huh? Mm-hmm. That hurts. But yeah, we need to get. We, we need, need to, to build up our pool. Position. We need to build up our pool. Ugh. That hurts. Okay. Then I still don't have. I I cannot play around this. There's just I have nothing to do that with. Okay, no. I'm gonna come close off this mist field. Okay. So it has one symbol on it, so I don't have to add any because I'm adding it to an existing mist field, one discount. Uh -huh. So that means I don't have to play any here either. Uh -huh. And we get to get rid of these two. And I can jump into a city. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do this here. Okay, so that adds two and one to the cemetery. One. But I'm gonna score this one for six. Five, five points away. Points. We need five points. If we can score this road without dying, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six points. Do oh, but I drew this, so. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I did this, so yeah. All right, here's what I'm going to do. This mist field can't be closed anyways. Right. So I'm going to drop this in here. Okay. It doesn't add any ghosts because it has no mist on it, and it closes my road for one, two, three, four points. Okay. So let's score those, and we are one point. Okay. So now we have two cemeteries, but we only ever have to add ghosts to one of them. Can you score us a point? We have half a city here. If we can close that without dying. No, I can't. We have two different roads. I can't if we do can that. Close either of those. I can't do anything. Okay. Then any way to not have us not die? Okay, so these two will go here, and this one goes here. Yep. So we have no more ghosts. Yep. Slivers! Hi, 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 hi. So I have nothing that would allow me to play no. without placing a ghost. No! Are you serious? I'm serious. Can you connect to here? Nope. I would have to place at least one. For this one. My lowest ghost count is two. Mm, for reals? Can you close this one off? We don't have any ghosts to place. No, I'm saying like, can you, is there a one? Do you have a one ghost? You have to place ghosts first and then you get to remove them. But can you close it off without having to place? No, I, my lowest is two. No, but... We were one point away. <laughs> no, but. So this was interesting. The three tile variant. Um, doesn't It does help, but it doesn't help. Well, <laughs> what happens in the game when you draw just one is everybody gets to talk about it now. And so we cooperatively discuss where should this go. Oh, that's true. In the three tile variant, you don't do that. You don't that. do that. That's true. So it's just up to me. And then I'm like, well, should I tell you not to play? Like, I, I wanted to tell you not to play there because yeah. I wanted to drop the cemetery right here. Ah, uh, gotcha. But I felt like, well, that seems kind of weird to tell you what I've got in my hand. Gotcha. Cosmic Ben says, that's so funny. We were playing this last night as our last game before midnight. Nice. Did you all win? Which level were you playing at, Ben? We're currently at level two. And this We've is tried three, three times. times. And we have yet to win. To be fair, the first game, uh, we were playing without a very important rule. Um, the rule where instead of scoring, you can remove ghosts. Yeah. We didn't pick up on that rule. Yeah. And so that was like super hard mode. And hello, Cosmic Ben. Two is so hard. Okay, so it's not just us. Cosmic Ben is who I got to meet out at. Yep. Uh, at PAX. PAX. Oh, yep. Awesome. 
Yep, yep. Happy New Year. It was awesome to meet you at PAX. Last game I played was level 127, and we won handedly. Level 127, which are you talking? <laughs> what are you talking about? Slivers? So silly. He's so talking silly. talking what we refer to as crap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. All and right. That is Mist Over Carcassonne. It is very fun. Um, yeah. You can see it's not a super long game. So if it's you not. Didn't get totally hosed, it's like shuffle up the tiles and go for it again. Right. Uh, we made a brief cameo in Ben's video. Uh oh. What we was did. it for? We did, apparently. Made a cameo in his video. Very cool. So, friends, this concludes today's stream. Shout out again to Sunrise Tornado. If you want more information about the Aqua Kickstarter, please sign up for the notifications when it goes live. They have a day $7 one special. special. Sorry, you were going for it. Go for it, love. Uh, day one special for $7. You can't beat that. Uh, so make sure you get notified on that. Yeah, even that other company that's very well known for their 18 card games, they cost more than seven dollars. Like, yeah, seven dollars is a great deal. great deal. Great deal. So yeah, and Tate do it, do it. Tate put a lot of time and effort into this. He's still painting things for it. <laughs> um, two player games are your jam. So yeah, it is two player only, but it's also a very quick game. Like you've seen on stream, we've, we got through it, you know, in 20, 25 minutes. So it's super fast, super quick. Um, yeah. If you got three players, just be like, you play winner, you play winner. Yeah. Do kind of like See a little tournament. To stay in as long as they can. Yeah. A little tournament there. So, all right, friends. Well, I'm going to send you all over to Ambi Rona and Joe Sondow. They are... Deadpan's right. You get 18 cards and you get six cubes. That's right. Ooh, it's a deal for $7. Uh, they're doing their puzzle games, their Monday night puzzle games. So, please feel free to uh, send love them me a all good the puzzy. love. Um, if you are a subscriber to the chat, please use the CCG raid emotes. Otherwise, regular emotes are just fine. Uh, I will be back on Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm not sure. I might play some more Katamari. I might play something from our shelf of opportunity. I don't know. Um, David's doing some more advertisement happening here but until then friends uh stay safe enjoy your board games be kind to one another and we'll catch y'all on the next stream happy new year everybody bye